All right, so today we want to talk about data structures and specifically the Q data structure. So we're going to talk about what this is, the typical methods that you would have in a Q data structure, and then how to build it, both with an object and with an array as the base behind the Q. So we're going to be extending uh, an object or extending an array to build one of these. All right, so my simple little web page here is I'm going to be able to, and I have the object version of this built already just to be used as a demo, then we're going to build the array one together. So I'm going to add movies to a queue. Now I've set the max size of my queue to be three. So I can add three things in here. And as I add them, you can see I'm going to find out how many items are currently in there. And the last movie in the queue is this one. So if I add another one, Now that becomes the last item in the queue. And if I add a third one, there we go. Now that's the last one. If I try to add one more, because my max size is set to three, this one should be rejected. And there we go. There's our error coming up. Queue is currently full. Try again later. Okay. So what is the purpose of a queue? Now that we've seen a, a tiny little demo, a queue is a data structure that kind of moves in one direction. You can take a look to see what's at the front of the queue. You can take a peek to see what's at the end of the queue. So we're going to have methods to do that. Without removing something, I want to know what's what's next in line to be removed, what's the most recent thing to be added. And that's this last movie in the queue. That's the most recent thing to be added. Queues have a method for adding an item, and it always adds it to the end of the line. Just, I mean, picture people lining up to get into a concert. So you've got the people at the front of the line, they're the next ones to get in. The people who are at the end of the line are going to be the last ones to get in. So it's a first in, first out type data structure. All right, so that's what we're doing. And then if we remove, it's going to be the first item here. This one is going to be the one that gets removed from the queue, and then the new number one, and now the new number one, and now the queue is empty. And if I log the contents, you can see it's an empty object at this point. We add one thing. Now we can do it because the queue is empty. Um, even if it was full, if we added a couple more things, there we go. A couple things added. Now if we log the contents. There we go. We can see it's, it's like an object and three, four, and five. Those are the sort of IDs or the labels that we're using to keep track of it. In an object, we want to keep track of these numbers because they'll let us know, hey, what's the number for the one at the front of the line? What's the number for the one at the end of the line? So we need to keep track of those two numbers and then we'll keep track of the length separately. Let's take a look at the code and build a new queue. So my HTML, I've got three buttons with three click listeners, and they're calling these methods for add a movie, remove a movie. So we're adding something to the queue, removing something from the queue, and logging this out. Now, it doesn't matter what we call these methods. What we want is we want to use this queue data structure. So right now, I'm importing this queue obj1. So inside of here, in the constructor, when I say new queue, Here's where I set my maximum to three. So this is the length. And this is a private property in my object saying, okay, this is the most that you can hold at any one time. Length is zero, that number that keeps track of who's at the front of the line, who's at the back of the line, what's your ticket number, the length, how many items are inside of it. And we're gonna use just an object literal to hold each of these items. So the basic methods, that you're going to have. Now, if your names are different, that's okay, but these are sort of the fairly typical names. You'll have a size method. It's going to return that length property, the private internal length property. How many items? So each time you enqueue something, you're adding the item to the queue, and you're going to increment that. You're also going to increment the back index. That's the number at the end. So after I've added somebody, so when I enqueue, I'm passing an item in, and I'm going to assign it to whatever the current value of this is. After I've done that, I'll increment the number to say, okay, now I'm looking at number one, two, three, four, and so on. And 
this.items, that was our object literal that we had up here. This is where we're putting it. So we're creating the property and we're putting the item inside every time we add. And just before we do that, we check to see, hey, is the queue currently full? That's another one of the methods. So we've got in queue to add, DQ to remove, and we're finding out what that item is. And then we're going to delete it from this.items, subtract one from the length, and increment the front index. So, hey, now the next item, the next person, the next ticket number in line is going to be the current one. Peak, we're looking inside. Tail, we're looking at the end. So, the front index, who is the first in line? Who is the last in line? So, the back index, you'll remember up here that we incremented. So, we're ready for the next insertion. So we have to subtract one from that to be able to see actually what is the last thing in line. Is empty and is full, where we checked up here when we enqueued an item to see if it was full. And if it is, we throw this error. All we're doing is looking to see if the length is zero, tells us it's empty. If is full, if the length is the same as max size. And our two string method we're just console logging this.items, the private variable, but you could do formatting if you wanted to format it to display it in a specific way. You could do that inside this function. All right, so that's currently what's happening. We've got an object version of this. And if you're looking for a copy of this code, if you look down in the description, you'll see the code gist. It has all these files. All right, so let's build one from scratch using an array. So here, I've got a first and last variable. This is going to be numbers to keep track of the first, oh, sorry, in this case, it's going to be the string. Over here, we had back index, front index. Those were the numbers. In the array version, we're just going to store a reference when we add something. Whatever the first item is, whatever the last item is, we'll keep that. So when we do our peak and tail, we can just look to see what those values are. Max size, I set it to five this time. You can set it to anything you want. You don't actually even have to have this max size. It's not a mandatory thing to have in a queue, but it's a possibility that you will see sometimes. And my list is an array instead of an object. So our constructor, if you're going to use a max size, this is where you would do it. So you'd say this max size equals max. So whatever's passed into the constructor or a default value. So back in our main, right here where we created the queue, we didn't pass in a number. If I did, I could say, hey, you can hold 20 items. When I do that, 20 is going to be the value that gets passed into here. So let's change this to point to our new one. So we're going to be able to test this. So I'll save that, come back in here. We have our constructor. Size, well, we don't have to have a length property like we did for the object because an array does have a length property. So we can just do this. We can say return this list dot length. This dot list is an array, so it has a built-in length property. We can return that. In queue, we want to add an item to the array. So this list push adds it to the end. So when you're building an array, the push method is the equivalent to the queue and queue method. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I'm adding that into there. And now at this point, we've got a new item at the end. So we're going to change this to say, hey, the last thing, this dot last is going to be item. In most scenarios, this is all you're going to need for an NQ method. But if you've got a max size, you do need to, at this point, check to see if you've reached that max size. And there's also the scenario where hey, you know what? My first item is set to null. If this is the first item I'm setting, well, then I'm going to want to change that as well. So we're going to add both these things right up here. We'll say if this is full, that's going to be my error, my error scenario to say that, yeah, okay, this thing's full. I have to throw a new error. And whatever message you want to put. So we're doing that if it's full and if it's empty, we're doing this notice before we do the push because at this point, the length 
is going to be zero. So if it is empty, then this dot first equals the item being passed in. So it's going to be first and last. It's going to be both items in the case where the queue was empty and this is the first thing being added. That's the only time we're going to change first from inside the end queue. In the D queue, we're changing the pointer for the first. It's going to go from the first guy in line. Well, he's admitted now, so I got to change it to the second one. So that's it. That's our in queue method. Now we may as well do the is full is empty down here because we're using both of those. So is empty return this items dot length if that is equal to zero. If that is true, we are empty. And for the full, return this items dot length and if that is the same as our max size, then we are full. And that gives us both of those. So our DQ, we're removing it. So let's get a reference to the item that we're going to remove because we do want to return that. When we actually remove it from the queue, we want to be able to pass that back. So this items Now we can say it's going to be the first thing in the queue. That's one way of doing it. Or because we're dealing with an array, what we can do is use the built-in array method called shift. This returns whatever is at the front. So shift is pretty much the equivalent of DQ for an array. And NQ uses the array equivalent of push, or it's the array, array equivalent push and in queue for a queue. Okay, so we've got our item. We've shifted that off. We've got the reference to it. That is what we're going to return. So we're going to say return item. Now inside of here, what we have to do is we have to update. Okay, well, if we just pulled something off, we have to change our reference to first. That is going to be the next item inside of there. So this items number zero. There we are. So the new number zero in items in our array is going to be now this. This is pointing to the next guy in line. Now peak, very similar. We just, we don't want to actually do this. We don't want to do a shift. We don't want to remove it. It would be this, but since we already have this first, saving that, we can just use it. We can say return this first. So what is the point of doing this? Having this extra variable holding onto it? Well, it saves us the processor time. It saves us the effort of having to look this up. Somebody can call peak a thousand times and we don't actually have to go to the array and look inside of it to get number zero. We already have it saved. So we have to, we're giving up a little bit of memory. We're giving up the storage space to hold the value of what is held inside that first item. But we're saving ourselves the time of having to process and go to the array and look for item number zero and pull it out. So same, same idea for tail. We're going to return this last. So that's the last item inside of there. And then down here, this list to string. We can convert it to string. We can do just this. The console will take it and convert it to a string as it's writing it out for us. So there we have it. That is a queue, and that should function exactly like the other one did. Now I'll set the length here. We'll put it down to three just so that we get a short uh, list and we can test it. Oh. So we had an error on line 24. Oh, yeah, I'm calling it. I wrote items here, which is what I was using in this file. Here we're calling it list. So these two should say list. You probably noticed that as I was typing it. Line 35, probably the same error. Yeah, there we go. List and list. Just the wrong variable name. Okay, so let's try this again. So Orange County... Okay, we've got three things now. Log the contents. 
there we go. It's an array with three items. And if I try to add something new, it fails. There's our queue is full error. Removing goes backwards, removing the items and changing which one is in the front. If I log now, that's the only thing inside of there. And that's a queue. So anytime that you want to have sort of a list where it's first in, first out, the items move along and you're always taking from one end of your queue. You're always taking the first item. When you add something, you're doing it at the very end. And then your peak and tail methods are looking at those first and last items, but without actually removing them. And that's what we're using here. We're using a peak to look and see what the last item is. And when we're saying what's been removed, we could be writing out uh, with peak, we could be writing out what the next, the new thing is at the front of the line. All right, so once again, the code for this, link down in the description to the code gist that has all this. There is both the array and the object version using the same methods so that the main JavaScript works regardless of the implementation that we're using. Hope that uh, sparks some interest in some other data structures for you, like linked lists. I am going to be making some more videos on data structures in the coming videos. Uh, but for now, we've got a good start. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer whatever I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.